What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof and today we're gonna do another fun acrylic painting tutorial. This one's of a cute little sheep with a landscape behind him. This is gonna be a pretty quick tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna put this one probably at intermediate level uh, and I'm probably not gonna go into too too much detail either. So we're using acrylic paints. The colors that we have here are Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Brilliant Blue, Periwinkle Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Dioxazane Purple, Bronze Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Naphthal Red, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Burnt Sienna, Yellow Hansa, Magenta, Black, Titanium White, and Sap Green. This is a little six inch by six inch canvas. For brushes, we have a blend of brushes. We have a medium flat tipped brush, a couple smaller round tipped brushes, uh, and maybe let's throw in a flat tip brush too, a small flat tip brush. And that's what we got for today. I'm starting by just dipping the brush in the water and then dipping it in my blue paint, thinning it down so that I can get a good little sketch of my concept here. This is my center point. So I just look at, when I look at my reference photograph and start sketching out the scene, that helps me know where center is on my reference photo. That's where it's gonna be on here. So for our sheep, I'm just gonna get him first since he's kind of the main subject. He's got like a rectangle shape for his body with some legs sticking out of it. <laughs> And the sheep is grazing, so we're just gonna put his little head kind of comes down like this, and then his head is also at the grass. That's like my general sheep's shape. Sheep shape. And he's got all kinds of fur and a little belly on him too, but in general, there's our sheep. <laughs> Doesn't look so great yet, does it? Uh, all right, so next we've got the background. So, um, like a hill here, kind of feeds down into the grass and got some rocks up here. It comes off on the side there. Got a tree. Oh, you know what, let's do the far background. So we've got a water line, just like a horizon line for some water. So a nice flat line all across the canvas, basically. And then we've got a bigger hill back here. Just like some rolling hills in the background. Got a big rock right here. And it's sunrise here so we've got some nice play on light where we have some nice shadows and then some highlights and this rock is in front of that water line so we don't see that water horizon line behind there and then we've got a nice little tree right here and we'll just put a circle for now for the tree shape and go flatter section here a little rolling hills and we've got a little rock right here. Let's add another little rock to be that rock's little friend. <laughs> All right, so now we've got the scene sketched out. I'm gonna start with the sky at the top. I'm gonna to switch to my flat tipped brush here. And I'm gonna mix some brilliant blue with some white. And we're just gonna go back and forth right here, getting a good full coverage of paint not leaving any white space. I'm gonna use even more white at the base and just go right up to that sketch line for our mountains. You can paint behind the tree too. You can cover that up a bit uh, because you are gonna see through, see the sky through the trees just a little. There's that, we'll add a little more brilliant blue and a little bit of phthalo blue. 
I'll just put that at the top of the sky. We're gonna add a couple clouds, but while we're letting that dry, we're gonna work on the hills in the background here. So we're gonna add a little dioxazine purple and ultramarine blue. And we'll add some phthalo blue and some black. And that's gonna give me this little mountain far off in the distance. You want your mountain far off in the distance to be a little fuzzy so you can get the extra paint off your brush and then kind of blend it into the sky color a little bit just so it's not a super sharp line. And then just take some white and we're gonna put that at the base and blend that up into our top of the mountain color. All right, there's that. Now we're gonna keep moving forward to the towards the foreground. So I'm adding some ultramarine blue and black and we're gonna add some sap green. Also gonna add a little dioxazine purple still. And that's for this line up here. And this line is gonna be a sharper line since it's a little closer to the foreground, a little more in focus. There's our hill in the background. Make sure you don't let any white space be visible. You wanna get a good full coverage of paint. Let's add a little more color here. more black again. So a little ultra more, more ultramarine blue for this side. It's a little more in shadow over here. And then we can add a couple little highlights. We're gonna do sap green and white. And we're gonna add a little Hansa yellow. All right, and let's do a little more sap green. Now you can just start to add a couple little highlights on the hillside here. Your highlights should be on the right side of the hills where the light's reaching it. A little bit of our brilliant blue and our phthalo blue. We'll just throw that right there. Just go right up to your base of your mountains. Make sure that horizontal line is still basically following the background there. You can add a little more white for a little highlight. Maybe do a hint of purple too. Yeah, it looks nice. Add a little highlight on this side too. Now, Let's get these rocks here. So we're gonna take some of our uh, burnt umber and just blend that into the background tree color you used. Blend in some ultramarine blue. And that's a good shadow color to start with. So this should be darker than this tree lot, this um, hillside in the background. If this brown is not darker than that, then you need to lighten that up. Uh, things that are closer to the foreground are darker and lighter. They have more contrast than things that are farther away. Taking a little more brown. First, just trying to get the shape and then we can add some highlights later. I'm just filling in this whole thing with the shadow color. I'm gonna mix a little phthalo green in here. Put that right here. And now let's mix some sap green with our Hansa yellow. See what color that gives us. Okay, we need to blend in some cadmium yellow medium and a little bit of our Naphthol red. 
And let's do a hint of the uh, phthalo green. And now let's do some bronze yellow and some white. Maybe a hint more Hansa. All right, and that's a good base color for the grassy spots. So I'm just gonna fill in all of the grass with that color. It's like a morning sunlit grass color. <laughs> and I'm probably just gonna cover up these sheep, the sheep's legs and we'll put those back in later. Just wanna make sure that it's easier for me to just paint that whole area and then come back and add the legs. If it's easier for you to paint around the legs, then you could do that too. And we've got our hill up here. Comes down. Basically just filling in most of this space around the sheep now. Kind of letting it come right up to the rocky section and letting it blend just a little bit into the rock color so it's not like a super sharp contrast uh, between the rock color and the grass. Because we are gonna go back and add some stuff later. It's looking good. Now let's add some shadows to the grass. So I'm gonna take some sap green and I'm gonna take a little phthalo green and I'm gonna take a little burnt umber and let's take a little phthalo blue too. Yep, that's a good color. All right, and now we can start to add just a couple little shadows in the grass. We're gonna have a shadow from the sheep. So you wanna add some of this color on the other side of your sheep. Another shadow over here, little one. And then we've got some shadows back here where we have grass. Grass kind of makes its way up that rocky structure. All right, that's looking nice. Oh, we got a shadow from the rocks too. All right, so that's basically it for that. Uh, let me get these rocks real quick. I'm just gonna take some burnt umber and some black, and we're just gonna make them both really dark right now. We'll add a highlight to those later gonna get a base color for the sheep going and then we'll start to do some more uh, shadows and stuff. So the sheep has some purple and some of this um, bronze yellow color. It's also got some periwinkle blue. And let's do a little white and we'll do a little more periwinkle blue. That's a pretty good base color for the shadow. The sheep's mostly in shadow except for his bum. <laughs> Can add a little more purple in there too. So we're just gonna get the basic shape filled in with some base color here. Cover up our little cross edge that we started out with. Add a little bit of burnt umber and black to the underside here for his big belly. So making it a little darker at the base of the sheep. And then for the highlight on the sheep, we have white with some yellow ochre and cadmium yellow medium. Maybe a hint of this red. Do a little more yellow too. The top of the sheep also has a highlight. Couple little bits of fur caught that highlight too. All right, then we're gonna take some black for the sheep's head. All right, that's looking nice. I'm gonna Put that brush in the water. Now we're gonna switch to the smaller flat tipped brush. 
and we can start working on let's add the clouds to the sky so we're going to take some white some ultramarine blue and a little bit of black and we're just gonna you know what let's take a little more let's take some periwinkle blue in there too maybe maybe a little more ultramarine blue yeah and we're just gonna kind of dry brush this in so we don't have too much paint on the brush we're just kind of making swirly patterns until we lose all of the paint gives me like that puffy cloud texture and the same thing at the bottom we're just gonna add a little more white and a little more ultramarine got a cute little cloud right here you can also dip your brush in the water if you want to just get a quick little all right, now we're gonna take some white and we're gonna take a tiny bit of our naphthal red and a tiny bit of Hansa yellow cloud color. You're just gonna very lightly press on the canvas here with your brush. You can press a little bit heavier on that big cloud just to brush that highlight color in there still not pure white but brighter blending a little bit of purple in here All right, the clouds are good let's do our highlights on the rocks back here so we're gonna take some white and some cadmium yellow medium and some yellow ochre a little bit of periwinkle blue and we're gonna put that a couple little highlight sections in the back that are pretty light got this main highlight right here and we can add some little uh, highlights in the shadow just like a cool brighter section just to give us a bit of depth so I mix a little bit of blue in with my shadow color and I'm just using that to create a create a bit of depth in here and we can also go back and we can boost our shadows by mixing our burnt umber with ultramarine blue and a little bit of dioxazine purple and mix some ultramarine blue in there too. And we got a tiny little highlight back there too. Now we can see a couple more little highlights in here. Got a couple of rocks back here. Another little rock over here. Okay, and we're gonna brighten that highlight just by adding some white to that color. And then I'm just going to add a couple little streaks of extra bright highlight onto these rocks. Now let's add some highlights to the grasses back here. So we're going to take some of our sap green, our cadmium yellow medium, and our yellow ochre. Let's take more yellow ochre. 
and some white. And we can just hold the brush like this and just make a couple little lines here. You can go back like that too, just go back and forth. You can hold the brush this way, just to carry these highlights down. And you can take a little more Camium Yellow Medium, some Yellow Hansa. Just start to really brighten things up over here. Just kind of dragging the brush all around, creating these little highlights. Just don't put the highlights right in your shadow. I'm gonna add a little bit more Thalo Green and Hansa. A little more white too for down here. And you can just kind of start to scribble the brush around at this point. You want to get like that jaggedy bristles from the blades of grass there. So it's going to look like that more. So the tree has a dark base. We're going to take some ultramarine blue with the burnt umber. And this, these rocks here are in shadow from the tree. So just make sure your tree comes down with the base a little bit lower than those rocks. And you can add some little highlights there, something to the base of your tree too, so it's not just like a chill in there. <laughs> All right, we got these little limbs coming up. And now let's take some sap green and some phthalo green. And we're gonna do the shadow side first. So here I'm just kind of dabbing the canvas with my brush to get those and I'm kind of dragging it a little bit too to get the bristly little looks of the not the bristly but the little leaf texture branches and leaves and on this side we have a couple little shadows but it's more on highlight on this side. So we got the whole base filled in. Now I'm just gonna take some sap green and blend that in my grass color and take a little bit more yellow ochre. And let's take some burnt sienna. And we'll add that right here. Got a couple little highlights in this part of the tree. And then we got even more yellow ochre, and let's do cadmium yellow medium on this side. There we go. Got a couple little ones that have a brighter highlight over there. And then let's just add a shadow again here so that these look a little bit more separated. All right, looks nice for the tree. Now let's add some grasses. So we're gonna take bronze, yellow, white and some cadmium yellow medium. One more white, these are really bright. And you can thin down your paint here with some water or a medium if you wanna use a medium. And I'm just making these little bristles, very, very lightly tapping the canvas here. Just adding these grasses.
Got some more grasses back here. They're gonna be smaller back here, so make your little lines smaller. And we've got a bunch on this hillside. Now let's work on the sheep. Actually, real quick, let's add a little highlight to these rocks. So I'm just gonna take a little white. And we'll add a little bit of purple in there, why not? And just put that there. A little highlight there. And just do like a brighter white. And then we need a really dark green shadow like right at the base of the rock. And it just kind of carries out. Same thing with the sheep. We gotta darken this shadow up in a couple spots there. All right, now let's add some legs on the sheep. I'm just gonna use a little bit of black in this color I already have here to get started. So there's the, this is the body. The leg comes out at an angle like that. And then there's another leg right here. And then for the back, and the back leg. All right, man, sheeps have weird legs. Okay, so <laughs> there's the sheep's legs. We're gonna add a highlight on the back end of these legs where the light is reaching them. And this one, and let's just go in and add our nice highlight on the sheep's rear here. Basically just using the same color I used for the uh, grass, for the tall wheaty grass pieces. I'm just adding a little more white. And we can add a little bit of sienna. And then even darker, let's add more purple and burnt umber and black. for some of the really deep shadow parts here. For the underside here. Just wetting down my brush to get these thin little lines for the shadows. Again, not going too crazy with the details. Take some periwinkle blue and some bronze yellow. Well, let's do a little magenta. And let's add some white to that. And a little more periwinkle. And we can do our little highlights that aren't really highlights. They're like the cool highlights, I guess, on the sheep's shadowy side. And start to mix more brown, or burnt umber and black in. And let's mix some bronze yellow in there too as we're getting closer to the belly of the sheep. Little sheep first, kind of go at an angle here. Wool, <laughs> whatever sheep's uh, material on their <laughs> bodies called. 
do another highlight right here. There's some bright ones. Getting caught by the sun. All right, and let's just use this lighter color down here. One more periwinkle. And we'll take some black with a hint of umber. Work on this face again. Got like a bump on his head. <laughs> Let's take a little more black, and then we've got some dark, got some black in the hooves or the lower part of the leg right by the hooves it's got a couple little spots on its leg okay and then we just got to adjust the shadows so we'll take some more sap green and we'll just carry that sap green with a little water over here. Just deepen the shadows a bit in some spots here. All right, we can add some of these little shadows in here too. Kind of carry them all around like we just did with the lighter part of the grass. And we'll do some more little highlights on the grass. So we'll take more Hansa and a little bit of Thala, some cadmium yellow medium, and we'll do some bronze yellow too. How's that? Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you can just hold your brush at an angle and start to put some little highlights in there. You want to give like the texture of grass and you can do that by holding a flat tip brush and just kind of dragging it up and down like this. You just want your little spots to get more closely spaced as you're moving backwards. And we can add a little white. Let's brighten these up a little bit here. And the last thing we gotta do is add a little highlight on the sheep's mouth here, where there's like a little bit of light coming in. And let's use some ultramarine blue for a shadow on his face. And then he's got, we'll give him a little brown eye. It's probably like more yellow, but just add a little eye, like right there. Put a little black in the eye. And then add a little more black up here on his head. Can't really see his ears, but they're probably there. <laughs> and then we'll just add a couple more little Shadows in here. And another highlight. We'll take our periwinkle. Let's 
adding a few more little highlights in the fur or whatever this is, the wool. <laughs> and that's it guys. Pretty simple little landscape with a sheep. If you want to center your sheep in the painting, you could do that too. Um, I don't know, I just, he was over here in my reference photo, so I just put him there. But you can use a different size canvas if you want. Uh, you could add a little bit more to either side. You could add a little more to the hillside. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching this painting tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you recreate this painting, you can post it on your Instagram and tag me, The Painting Stoof. I definitely am looking forward to seeing your work. You could also post your painting on my Facebook page, The Painting Stoof, and we can all see each other's work and support each other. So thanks for joining me today. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.